Meaningful Use Stage 2, Corset 2, E-Prescribing and Drug Formulary Checking. The requirements of Corset 2 actually consists of two components combined into one to measure that more than 50% of all prescriptions written by the eligible provider are A, queried for drug formulary, and B, transmitted electronically from the EHR. The objective is just that, to ensure that permissible prescriptions are being transmitted electronically. Now, at the end of the reporting period, when you do your attestation, the results reported will be numerical, and they're going to represent a count of prescriptions. Numerical results, of course, are denominator and numerator numbers. The denominator in the case of course set two is all prescriptions written by the eligible provider during the reporting period. And then the numerator is going to be the total number of those prescriptions that are both queried for a drug formulary and then also transmitted electronically to the pharmacy and it must exceed 50%. Now there are two exclusions available to providers for Corset 2. One, for any provider who writes less than 100 permissible prescriptions during the reporting period. So in other words, if uh, let's say you're a chiropractor or an ophthalmologist and due to your specialty, perhaps you don't write a lot of prescriptions, then you may be able to exempt yourself from Corset 2. The second basis for exclusion is if there is no internal pharmacy within your clinic, uh, or there are no pharmacies within 10 miles of your physical location that accept electronic prescriptions. Now, a couple of additional pieces of information um, from CMS. One, regarding paper prescriptions. If there are situations where your patient specifically requests a paper prescription, you must still include it in your denominator. So therefore, it must still be entered into prognosis. It will not be able to be counted in your numerator, however, if you are writing it on paper instead of transmitting it through the ERX. The second piece of information that is in addition is with regards to controlled substances. Now in stage one of meaningful use, controlled substances are excluded. Stage two, however, permits them. So by default, when there is a controlled substance on your prescription, it is going to be counted. However, it is optional for a physician to elect to do electronically prescribing controlled substances. Uh, that, of course, within prognosis actually requires some additional implementation and setup. Um, you have to go through a two-factor authentication process for security validation um, and things of that nature. So if you have not implemented EPCS in your practice, please remember under MU settings, which is handled in a separate training video here on our resource center, you need to make sure you exempt yourself from controlled substances, otherwise they are going to be included. Now along those same lines of controlled substances, with regards to exclusion number one, there's a, a misunderstanding or kind of wishful thinking on the part of many providers, um, such as pain management or surgeons, since the majority of their drugs are actually controlled substances, they feel that maybe out of their prescriptions, only a few of them are non-controlled substance. So they think that they qualify for exclusion one, and that is not the case. Uh, because notice the exclusion is worded as 100 permissible prescriptions. Controlled substances are permissible, whether you choose to do them or not. As regards the first part of course set two, the drug formulary checking, this is part of the SureScript eligibility, which is auto-executed when the encounter is started. The results are available here under the prescription screen, as we see in our example of Mary Paltrow. Now the label of the button will display in white when benefits are found, at least one pharmacy benefit manager record for the patient, or it will display as red when eligibility is either not found or cannot be verified, such as a mismatch. Now in our example, we see that since our label is white, at least one benefit record was found, and if we look up here in our formulary status, we see that it is showing that she is off formulary. Therefore, this particular example would be compliant for course set two. Now in this next example, our button label is red. And if we notice our tool tip here in the lower right, the reason is no eligibility found. Now this is one of two possible scenarios where the eligibility cannot be auto-determined. If we click the button, 
the eligibility info details pop-up will list the three possible reasons why. One, the patient doesn't have any insurance at all. Or two, the patient has insurance, but there are no pharmacy benefits included in the plan. Or three, it cannot be determined because some of the demographic details are not matched up, whether it's the gender, the date of birth, or the zip code of the patient. So in order to get compliant for Core Set 2, you have to go back to the patient register, verify and update the information, and then come back in here and click the retry button. Or of course, you can just leave it as a non-compliant occurrence. Now in this last example where our button is red, notice this time the tooltip says no eligibility selected as opposed to not found. In this scenario, there are multiple pharmacy benefit managers reporting, or there are at least multiple detail records for the patient with regards to their benefits, and you have to make a choice. So when you click the button and the eligibility info details pops up this time, you'll see as you scroll down, multiple detail records from different PBMs that are reporting. You choose the radio button that is most applicable for this occurrence and then click the OK button to apply it. That will turn the label white and give you compliance for this particular patient. Now the second component of Core Set 2 is the e-prescribing of medications. Because controlled substances are part of Stage 2, if you have chosen to do them, we have an example now using our same patient of Mary Paltrow, but we've changed her prescription screen. And we have a combination of controlled substances, regular drugs, some with pharmacy, some without pharmacy, to demonstrate all of the different functions. So as we look down here at our drug detail, for instance, we see our ketamine, and it is a DEA class drug, has a type 3. It is assigned to pharmacy Walgreens. Across the top, we see here that our Walgreens does support EPCS, and our drug type says signed. The oxycodone, however, even though the type says signed, does not have a pharmacy. Now the phenylhistine, also a controlled substance, has a pharmacy. Notice the pharmacy, however, does not support EPCS. So even though it also shows a status of signed, it cannot go to this particular pharmacy. And then of course our Tylenol, the type is ERX, it is a non-controlled substance. Pharmacy does support ERX, so it can go. So in this example of Mary Paltrow, where we have a prescription that has four drugs on it, if this was your meaningful use example, the denominator would be four because all drugs are permissible on the assumption that Dr. Cooper is in fact participating with electronically prescribing controlled substances, but the numerator would only be two. And that would be for your ketamine, which is a signed controlled substance, going to a drugstore that supports electronic controlled substance, and then the Tylenol, because it is a non-controlled substance, going to a pharmacy that accepts them. The oxycodone and the phenylhistine are in the denominator because they're permissible, but they are not in the numerator. The oxycodone, although signed, does not have a pharmacy. The phenylhistine, although signed, has a pharmacy that does not accept EPCS. And although we don't see them here in this example, two other scenarios where the drug will count in your denominator but not in the numerator are one, any permissible drug, whether controlled substance or not, that has no pharmacy at all, or two, any EPCS drug that does have an EPCS pharmacy assigned but that has not been electronically signed by the provider. 